Hello everyone, welcome to Auricular Medicine brought to you by Lamp Acu Wellness Foundation, Inc. Today our topics include overview and anatomical terminology. Auricular medicine is a traditional method. It includes auricular diagnosis as well as auricular therapy and auricular preventive medicine. Exemplarily, ear acupuncture has been successfully used in various fields of medicine, especially for pain relief. The aim of auricular causative diagnosis is to discover the inner causes of pathologic conditions. ACD is based on visualization and analysis of the pathologic marks in auricular points. ACD allows physicians to identify existing illnesses precisely and determine which inner organ is fragile and therefore responsible for the development of a symptom. ACD can even be used to anticipate and reveal developing pathologic processes before their clinical manifestation and therefore can be used to prevent illnesses. Auricular therapy is a relatively safe and cost-effective system of auricular acupuncture developed by Dr. Paul Noget. In general, it is well known for its usefulness in the treatment of painful neurologic disorders such as migraine, polyneuropathy, and radiculopathy. What is perhaps less well known is auricular therapy's usefulness in the treatment of non-painful neurologic conditions. Yet, such applications are particularly relevant to the field of neurology, as neurophysiology was postulated by Noget and other researchers to be a primary factor underlying auricular therapy's clinical efficacy. Preventive medicine is the practice of promoting preventive health care to improve patient well-being. The goal is to ultimately prevent disease, disability, and death. Auricular medicine is easy to learn and master. Ear acupuncture tools are not costly, regardless of which modality, needles, pellets, is selected for treatment. The equipment required for ear acupuncture is minimal and relatively inexpensive. Ear acupuncture can be used as an exclusive and independent modality or as adjunct to therapy to enhance and reinforce treatment initiated through other methods. Results obtained from auricular acupuncture are quick, effective, time-tested with over a 2,500-year history. Ear acupuncture is a non-invasive technique that is convenient to patients in terms of ease of administration, and promotes patient compliance through self-treatment. Auricular medicine has a broad range of applicability to numerous clinical conditions, including diagnosis, prognosis, treatment, prevention of disease. Like body acupuncture, ear acupuncture can be used for treatment of diseases of internal organs, as well as musculoskeletal and emotional problems. Ear therapy is particularly effective for treatment of pain, inflammation, skin disorders, and can treat both acute and chronic disease. Ear can be used successfully for every clinical condition, producing at least a 90% success rate. Like body acupuncture, if properly applied, the strength of auricular acupuncture is that it stimulates body to heal itself according to the principles of balancing yin and yang and promoting proper organ function. Ear acupuncture works best when it treats root over symptoms. Regardless of specific illness with which you are dealing, you must always keep the pathophysiological cause in mind. Only then will you be able to get to the root of the disorder. Now let's study the anterior aspect of the ear. Let's start with the helix. The helix is the outermost portion of the auricle consisting of a rim-like structure. The cruse of helix is the beginning of helix. It originates in cavum concha. The tubercle of helix is a small appendage on the medial border of the outer rim of the helix at the junction of the upper third and middle two-thirds of the helix. This is also called Darwin's tubercle. The tubercle of helix. Many patients have very subtle and undefined tubercles. Hence, we must infer where it would be. To do this, 
divide the length of the ear into thirds. The tubercle is roughly at the junction of the upper third and the lower two-thirds of the helix. Scaphoid fossa. Fossas are depressions. Scaphoid fossa is depression between helix and antihelix, sometimes called scapha. Next, we have the ear apex, the height of the helix. If you gently fold the ear, the ear apex is located at the top of the helix where the fold occurs. Antihelix. This is an elevated ridge-like structure medial to the helix and running parallel to it. The antihelix and helix are separated by scaphoid fossa. It has three parts. The superior antihelix cruise, the more lateral superior branch of the antihelix, bifurcates off lower antihelix cruise at lumbago point. The inferior antihelix cruise is more medial, inferior branch of antihelix, bifurcates off lower antihelix cruise at lumbago point. The lower antihelix cruise is the lower portion of the antihelix. The inferior and superior antihelix crura bifurcate off the lower antihelix cruise. Then we have the triangular fossa. This is a triangular depression bordered by superior and inferior antihelix crura. Next, we locate the conchas. The cavum concha, interior portion of the auricle that has a concave surface. The cavum concha is separated from simba concha by cruise of helix and lies inferior to the cruise of helix. The simba concha, the interior portion of the auricle below the inferior antihelix cruise. The simba concha lies superior to cavum concha with the cruise of helix dividing them. The tragus is a small ridge-like flap connected to the lateral portion of the face. The tragus is directly anterior to external auditory meatus. The supratragic notch is an indentation above the tragus. The intertragic notch is the indentation below the tragus. The anti-tragus is a bump-like structure at the inferior diagonal angle to the tragus. The lobe is the lowest portion of the auricle. The lower border of the intertragic notch demarcates the lobe's upper border. The external auditory meatus is the canal medial to cavum concha, behind the tragus that conducts sound waves into the inner ear. Now let's go to the posterior aspect of the ear. The root of the auricle, or the ear root, is a depression on the posterior aspect of the ear just above the tendinous flap that connects the auricle to the head. Then we have the hypertension groove, or HG. This is a groove-like depression formed by the posterior border of the helix. It runs in the upper third of the groove on the posterior aspect of the ear. The posterior aspect of the ear proper refers to the rest of the back of the ear. Thank you very much for your attention. See you on our next video.